Welcome mathematicians to a video on seasonal indices. In today's video I'll be looking at exam style questions on seasonal indices. So let's jump straight into it. Okay, let's acknowledge all these exams are coming from the VCAA exam catalog. And our first one is the 2017 further math exam number one, question number 16. It states the seasonal index for the sale of cold drinks in a shop in January is 1.6. To correct the January sales of cold drinks for seasonality, the actual sales should be, and then we have a range of either reduced by a percentage or increased by a percentage answers. First of all, recall the deseasonalized values are equal to the actual value divided by the seasonal index. We take our seasonal index of 1.6 and we substitute in for the seasonal index. So now we have deseasonalized value is equal to the actual value divided by 1.6. Another way of writing that is to simply multiply the actual value by the fraction of 1 over 1.6. This statement is exactly the same as dividing by 1.6. Now 1 over 1.6 as a decimal comes out to 0.625. So this statement now says that the deseasonalized value is equal to the actual value multiplied by 0.625. Or another way of stating this is that the deseasonalized value is 62.5% of the actual value. Now that's less than 100, so that's a reduction. If I take 62.5 away from 100, I can see that this represents a reduction of 37.5%. So answer A is correct. A similar one from 2020. To correct the rainfall in March for seasonality, the actual rainfall should be to the nearest percent. And again, we have a range of decreases and increases. So let's have a look. March here has a mean rainfall of 52.8 millimeters and it's got a seasonal index of 0.741. We just want to work out what is the increase or decrease in percentage. So we take the seasonal index of 0.741 and we substitute into our equation. Now again dividing by 0.741 is the same as multiplying by 1 over 0.741. And when we express that as a decimal that comes out to 1.35. So that's effectively multiplying our actual value by 135%. So in this case Comparing it to 100%, we've actually increased it by 35%. So the answer for this question is D. 2020 again, further maths exam number one, question 16. This question states, the long-term mean rainfall for December is closest to, and then we have a range of options, A, B, C, D, and E. Now to calculate the December long-term mean rainfall, we need to use some of the other data involving both a rainfall and a seasonal index. So first of all, let's consider January. We know that the seasonal index is calculated by looking at the actual value and dividing it by the average of all the months. So in this case, let's fill it in. The seasonal index is 0.728. The actual value is 51.9. We can now use our TI Inspire CAS calculator to calculate the average monthly value of the mean rainfall for the entire year. Here's the values entered into the calculator. We press enter and we get an average monthly rainfall for the year of 71.29 millimeters. Now we could have used the data from Feb, March, April, May. They all would have given us the same average value of the whole data set of 71.3 millimeters. Now let's look at our December calculation. Again, the seasonal index is equal to the actual value of that month divided by the average value of the entire year. So we're trying to work out what is the mean rainfall for December, given that it has a seasonal index of 1.072 and that the average monthly rainfall for the year is 71.3 millimeters. Let's sub our values in. We have a seasonal index of 1.072 and we have an average value of 71.3. We can use our CAS calculator solve function to calculate this. Here's our equation using x as the unknown. We press enter and we get an average December monthly rainfall of 76.4 millimeters. And we end up with an actual value for December of 76.4 millimeters, which is answer D. Continuing on with the 2020 paper, exam number one, question 17. The deseasonalized rainfall for May in 2019 is closest to. Right, again, deseasonalized value is the actual value divided by the seasonal index. And for May, we see the monthly rainfall, the actual value is 92.6 millimeters. And the seasonal index for May is 1.222. Sub those values in, and we get a deseasonalized value for the rainfall in May as 75.8 millimeters, which is option B. Moving on to 2018, further maths exam one, multi-choice. 
our question number 16. The quarterly sale figures for a large suburban garden center in millions of dollars for 2016 and 17 are displayed in the table below. Using these sales figures, the seasonal index for quarter three is closest to, and we have a range of answers. So first of all, let's work out the average for the four quarters in 2016. So we're adding together these four values and then dividing by four to find the average of 2.2925. Moving on, we do the same for the year 2017. We're adding together these four values and then dividing by four to find an average of 1.5775. Step three is we now want to calculate the seasonal index for the 2016 third quarter. So to do that, we take the actual value of 3.34 and we divide it by the average of 2.2925 and that gives us a seasonal index of 1.46 for 2016 third quarter. Repeat the same for 2017 third quarter. We use our value of 2.05 and we divide it by the average of 1.5775. That provides us with an seasonal index for quarter three in 2017 of 1.30. Our question is to calculate the seasonal index for quarter three. That includes both 2016 and 2017. So all we'd have to do is average out the two values, 1.46, was the seasonal index for quarter three in 2016. 1.3 was the seasonal index for quarter three in 2017. Add those two together, divide by two, and we end up with an overall quarter three seasonal index of 1.38, which is option C. Question 2021. Further mass exam one, question 15. The table below shows the number of visitors in an art gallery during the summer, autumn, winter, and spring quarters of the years 2017 through to 2019. The quarterly average is shown for each of these years. The seasonal index for summer is closest to. It's a similar to our previous question. What we're going to do first of all is work out what is the seasonal index for the summer of 2017. So we take the number of visitors in summer for 2017 and we divide it by the quarterly average for 2017 and we get a seasonal index of 1.092. We repeat the same for 2018. The number of visitors was 25,420. We divide it by the 2018 quarterly average and we end up with a seasonal index for summer for 2018 of 1.096 and finally the same for 2019. That gives us a seasonal index for summer for 2019 of 1.077. All we need to do now to work out the overall seasonal index of summer is to average those three. So we've got 1.092 plus 1.096 plus 1.077 all divided by three gives us a seasonal index for summer of 1088, which is option C. 2021, question 16. The number of visitors to a regional animal park is seasonal. Data is collected and deseasonalized before a least squares line is fitted. The equation of the least squares line is deseasonalized number of visitors is equal to 2349 take away 198.5 times the month number, where month number one is January 2020. So this represents January 2020, February 2020, March 2020, and so forth, all the way through to December 2020. The seasonal indices for the 12 months of 2020 are shown in the table below. The actual number of visitors predicted for February 2020 was closest to. So first of all, step number one, find the deseasonalized number of visitors for February 2020. Now we said before, February 2020 was the month number two. So I substitute the month number two, which represents February 2020, and put this in my calculator, I end up with the number of deseasonalized visitors as 1952 for the month of February in 2020. However, the question was asking us to calculate the actual number of visitors February 2020. So to convert from deseasonalized to actual, we need to take our deseasonalized number of visitors and multiply the seasonal index for that particular month. So our deseasonalized number of visitors for February 2020, which is calculated to be 1952, and then we're multiplying it by our seasonal index for February, which has got the month code of two, of a value of 1.25. Multiplying these two together, that gives us the actual number of 2440, which is option E. Last couple of questions, 2019, further math exam number two, which is short answer, question 6A. The total rainfall in millimetres for each of the four seasons in 2015 and 16 is shown in the table below. So here's our values of our seasons in 2015 and 16 and the total rainfall in millimetres. The seasonal index for winter is shown in the table below. Use the above table to find the seasonal indices for summer, autumn and spring. 
Write your answers in the table below rounded to two decimal places. As done previously, step one, we need to find the average for 2015. So we're taking our four seasonal rainfalls, adding them together and then dividing by four. So for 2015, we get an average seasonal rainfall of 160 millimeters. For 2016, we do this again. We add the four values, the four seasonal rainfalls for 2016. We add them together, divide by four, and we end up with an average of 150 millimeters of rain. So let's have a look in summer. So the seasonal index for summer in 2015 requires us to take the rainfall and then divide it by the average. That gives us a seasonal index for summer in 2015 of 0.8875. We repeat the same process for the summer of 2016, and that gives us a seasonal index of 0.9. Now the overall seasonal index for summer over these two years is the average of those two values. So it's 0.8875 plus 0.9 divided by two gives us a seasonal index for summer for 2015 and 16 together of 0.89. Let's repeat that now for autumn. So we take our autumn rainfall of 2015, which is 156 mil, and we divide it by the average of 160, gives us a seasonal index for 2015 of autumn of 0.975. We repeat that for 2016, and we get a value of 1.02. If I average those two out to find the overall seasonal index for autumn, I end up with a rounded value of 1.00 to two decimal places. So I put that in our table. Finally, we do the same for spring. We compare the spring rainfall for 2015 and divide it by the average. That gives us a seasonal index of 0.75. We repeat it for 2016, which gives us a seasonal index of 0.64. So averaging those two together, the seasonal index for spring is found to be 0 0.70, rounded to two decimal places. So that's our answer for 6A. Finally, 6B. The total rainfall in millimetres for each of the four seasons in 2017 is shown in the table below. So here's our table with the seasonal rainfalls for 2017. Use the appropriate seasonal index from the table below to deseasonalize the total rainfall for winter of 2017. And we're asked to round our answer to the nearest whole number. So to find the deseasonalized rainfall for winter in 2017, we take the actual rainfall in 2017 from winter and divide it by the seasonal index of winter. So here's our actual rainfall in winter in 2017, it's 262 millimetres, and we're dividing it by a seasonal index of 1.41. When we do that, we get a deseasonalized rainfall in winter of 2017 of 185.8 millimetres. We're asked to round to the nearest whole number, that will round up to 186 millimetres. Thanks for watching this video, I hope it's clarified some of the exam style questions for seasonal indices and associated questions. If you have enjoyed and indeed learnt something from this video, please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.